Thanks, Chair, and welcome back, uh, witnesses. Um, A.G. Hogan, quick question. The procurement ombudsman in his report had commented about the bait and switch that was happening with um, procurement and seemed to insinuate it was quite widespread through um, the whole of government. Do you have a sense of how systemic this issue is? Obviously, CBSA, but do you have a sense how systemic it is otherwise? Um, so it's my understanding that the procurement ombuds report really looked at the front end of the processes more, whereas um, when we audit, we come in once the procurement is in place and we're looking at sort of validating that the resources are used. So um, I can tell you here that there are reasons why uh, a resource in a task authorization or a contract may not work on a contract, but I would expect that the mechanisms that the government this has are used to switch that right. up so that you don't um, to accept an invoice with a resource that you didn't already okay. get. The uh, the documents we heard from both of you uh, missing documents, like who within CBSA was responsible for collecting and storing those documents? Like which, what documents, who was responsible for it? I think where we saw missing elements, and I would encourage you perhaps to ask um, the president uh, exactly who, but I would have expected that there would have been someone who would have t planned um, a pr project oversight. And so that would have been perhaps the business owner, whoever was tasked with making sure that the application was developed and implemented. I would then expect someone in contracting to ensure that the file makes sense. Anyone so who signs off on an invoice but it was quite for making sure. quite widespread though. Well, I think that there are many individuals mm. who play a critical role mm. when it comes to making sure procurement it's, and projects are well Is it the same issue well with documented. the, you commented, inaccurate financial records? Is it the same issue throughout the department? Like it's just not one position, but throughout this project or throughout the department? Well, again, I think it starts with the person who might accept an invoice with insufficient information and then certify and sign off that the government received what they, they uh, should have received whoever does the coding, um, then who does the entry into the financial Which system. Sense? So again, I think you're, you have the luxury of having the president of CBSA here, and some of these questions are well directed at her as to who, who would have been accountable and how many individuals um, would be involved in a process to treat an invoice. Well, President Gorman, maybe you can uh, answer that in writing because we're short of time, but maybe you can get back to the committee on that because I want to move on to another couple. Could, could you just be clear on what, what the question is? The question what to part are who, what positions were responsible or should have been collecting and ensuring all the paperwork was there, but also the, as the AG comments, the inaccurate financial records because I assume it's not just one person. Maybe you can get back to the committee of which departments, which projects, et cetera. Quick question for you. Second. Is that possible for you to do that in writing after the? I can answer it or come back in writing. Yeah, in writing, please, just because it's shorter time. Thank you. I want to follow up. Just uh, the two gentlemen, um, Mr. Um, McDonald and Mr. Utano, they both received uh, performance bonuses last year, did they not, in the year before, in the year before that? I don't know. They I, did. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm surprised that you would not know considering the gravity of the situation. Yeah, I'm stunned there. that's not part of the look. How did, how did they receive bonuses if they are the subject of these accusations? So I wasn't aware who received bonuses, okay. but to your question, um, they would have been assessed at the time at the end of the fiscal year. And so, to the extent that so there's information, to the one extent moment that they're I'll assessed well enough to receive bonus, the next moment they're history's greatest monsters in CBSA, according to some of these documents. It just seems quite strange. But I can answer that question, Mr. Chair. Just if, very briefly, please. So, there's mechanisms if there's information yeah. that comes to light after performance ratings are done to be able to reconsider those ratings. Just question for you. Um, we first started, OGA first started, sorry, not we, but operations estimates first started this uh, ripe kind of investigation in October 2022. Why did it take all the way up to the Butler allegations for CBSA to actually act and start looking more seriously at uh, this uh, rather lackadaisical effort? So two things. Um, one, when uh, the study was started, 
and we were uh, bringing information together to respond to the committee, it was clear to me that the documentation was incomplete and inadequate. The study was started in October, and the Botler allegations came in November the following month. Last one, I want to read to you a text. This is from uh, Mr. Duan, and this is before his uh, appearance. My issue is what I want to say and what I can't say. Can I throw P or throw PHAC under the bus, throw ministers under the bus? What do you think Mr. Duan was re referencing when he said he could not speak to these for fear of throwing PHAC or ministers under the bus? I have no idea. Have you looked into it? This is the first I, I hear of that text. Have you ever heard of any issues regarding Mr. Duan and such issues in his prep for appearing before committee? No. How far back, I guess, does this mess with CBSA go with its purchasing and its IT issues? This is not something that started with ArriveCan. How long has it been going on and how did no one catch it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So as I said, when I started and there were questions regarding the documentation and the cost of ArriveCan, it became very clear to me that the documents were not complete and we had to try and piece together the information as the questions came in. I'm not sure how far back it goes. I've also launched an internal audit that will give me some further information and certainly the um, procurement audits and the Auditor General have uh, shed more light on the issue but the systems and processes were not in place, and suggestion to me is that some of that does predate the pandemic Thank and you. was that, maybe that's exacerbated time, by the pandemic. Thank you. That's the time.